What is up y'all, this is Alex from Alex PC Tech again back at you with another video. And on today's video, we are very excited because we are gonna be taking our first look at the XFX 6800 non-XT. Now, we are going to unbox this first, but as you can see, the box is like half of my body. The, the, the height of the box is almost half of my body, but okay, it doesn't weigh that much, but the weight of this box is at 2.2 kilograms. So we will be unboxing this behemoth as you can see now, but along the video, we will be discussing some differences with the non-XT and the XT version of the 6800 as this is the flagship card that XFX has to offer as of now at the moment of filming this video on the market. 2.2 kilos, not so bad. As you can see, it has the black and red like AMD's color schemes. You know what reminds me of the shape? It reminds me of the Chucky doll. <laughs> but this will give you a different horror. <laughs> okay. The box is very nice. This is not really a heavy box if you ask me, but it's quite huge. So it has this shoebox design for the box and then we'll try to pry it open so so upon opening we have the xfx warranty card and then we have this stop driver information there's no driver included okay this makes sense as other cards have cds but this one already has the support links or the links for the drivers included with it so even the support call center so <laughs> That's something different that you will see on not all the cards. But here is the moment of truth. So XFX. Okay, first impression is it's so big, to be honest. This is by far the biggest card that I've unboxed yet in my entire IT life, okay? I started with the NVIDIA Quadro and now we're here at the Radeon series. So it has this anti-static plastic where it is wrapped as you can see it's almost my shoulder okay so later we'll check the dimensions but for now let's remove it from this plastic i'll try to peel it off <laughs> because i might cut the card and stab it okay okay it's good that they're not wasting enough plastic because some graphics card are wrapped twice but let's take it out of the box or the plastic rather Okay, I thought it would be like that heavy, but this is not that heavy. I guess that is because of the aluminum material that they have used for all the parts of this one because everything is in aluminum. So let's start with discussing the XFX cards. So for the 6000 series, XFX is particularly calling the series as the Speedster series. Although it's not prominent in the box as you can see, it's just here. It's AMD Radeon RX Speedster series. Okay, I don't know why they call it uh, calling it Speedster or why they are calling this the 6000 series Merc. The first impression that I had when I saw this card was Merc, ah, as in Mercenary, yeah? XFX, can you please clarify? What is up with the naming convention of your cards? As confusing as AMD and Nvidia has, you also joined the foray of having these confusion names. This one, it's like your IT department and your marketing department join together in one of the corridors and talk, what, hey, look at this card. We are releasing a new 6000 series card. What should we use? name it? Okay, we shall name it Merc. As in mercenary, no. Mercury. Ah, I get what you did there, okay? Mercury, Mercury. But it has three fans. Ah, three fans? What three fans? Okay, we shall call it three. Mm, but the fans are at 100 millimeter. Okay, three one. And one 90 millimeter. Ha! Huh? Three one nine. We shall call it three one nine. So, I don't know, guys, if you have any idea which periodic table XFX has referenced these naming conventions, please comment down on the comment section below. But, as of looking at this, I am very confused why they are naming it 319. But the 3 stands for 3 fans, according to XFX. The 3 stands for 3 fans, and the 1 
stands for the two fans that are 100 mm on either side of the card. Now, for the 9, it is for the 90 mm card. Actually, this is a 92 mm card that is in the middle of the card. Does the name 319? Although I'm thinking, why did a why did they put a smaller fan in the middle? Is it because that this smaller fan spins faster and dissipate heats much faster in the central region of the card? I'm I'm really not sure, but we have to confirm that one. So as for the dimensions of the card, even my one foot ruler, as you can see here, even my one foot ruler cannot fit or cannot measure this card, okay? By default, according to the spec sheet, so the width is at 340 millimeters long, actually. So I doubt that this will fit any ITX or mini ITX cases, even my NZXT H500, I doubt that this will fit, but yeah, it will fit most compact cases. So you have to consider that if you're going or planning to buy this 6000 series from XFX. Also, this has the same size and dimension as the XT version. Okay, so for the thickness, so 50 millimeters thick, 340 times 50 millimeter thick. If you can notice, the thickness of this card is, it's a two-slotted card. But upon checking the specifications, it's 2.7. So you might want to allot three slots for this one in case you want to mount it on your case. Aside from that, looking at the appearance or looking at the front of the card, it has this three fan design that has 13 bladed fans, which each has a double bearing design okay so double bearing i guess they went with a double bearing design because it has better performance especially when the fans are spinning at a higher rate this card has an all aluminum build from the shroud to the back plate and to this mounting this mounting mechanism here they are all aluminum aside from being rigid this is quite light in my opinion this is quite light from other graphics cards that i've held from the from the past especially for the volume and width and length of it okay this is quite light the only question is will this aluminum hold this card and prevent sagging of the cards we all know that that is one common issue that we all encounter when it comes to this large gigantic cards but i guess this one since it's very light and especially the mount here is aluminum i can feel that it is a really tough aluminum as they've said that this is a die cast aluminum this will really suffice in holding the card but i guess it would be better if you still buy a separate gpu mounting bracket for this one in order to support the entire weight of the card from this side okay so for the side of the card, this is actually the best thing that I can say about this card. Because the sides are well built and they look really nice, okay? Both sides, from this top to this side, they look very nice, okay? So I really like how this card looks. Aside from the black accents and the titanium and silver accents, okay, that is happening all around, this doesn't have the RGB lighting okay so if you are an rgb fan if or and if you're doing an rgb build this is not one of those but with the lack of rgb comes functionality as what you can see here what xfx did is that they've designed this light bar to be protruding to not obstruct the heat dissipation of the aluminum heat sinks if you can see so that's one attention to detail that xfx has done on this card, given that this is a flagship card and XFX has learned from the designs of its, its card from the previous designs, this is actually one of their greatest designs in my opinion. It's very nice. Now, as for the connectivity, this card has three display ports at 1.4B and one HDMI 2.1 to give you that 4K at 120fps or 8K at 60fps. That is for the display ports. This card also supports Vulkan 12.1, OpenGL 4.64, and of course, DirectX 12 Ultimate. Other features that we can expect from this card is of course, AMD FreeSync, AMD Radeon software should be compatible with it, and of course, this card supports RTX as this version or this generation of cards from AMD is really their first 
foray into the RTX battle with, of course, NVIDIA. As for the specs, we have a base clock of 1850, game clock at 1980, boost un until 2190. But I guess this card can still boost up to 230. But the, of course, that will be depending on your temperature and the heat dissipation that the triple fan that this card has. Also, the memory is at GDDR6 16GB that is clocked at around 16GB PS. Now, as for the back, we have the sexy backplate that we have here with the Merc decal. No, please take note that this decal is not sticked but it is painted there and it has multiple heat dissipation points. As for this one, it has this cut out from the aluminum backplate that serves as an exhaust okay, for the heat dissipation of the aluminum. But we have to check how this goes and how this heat dissipation design from XFX performs. Other than that, I've noticed that there are thermal pads. Okay, there are thermal pads within the backplate and the PCB. So that's something different because commonly, thermal pads are reserved from the PCB to the heat sinks. But on this case, this actually does have a purpose of dissipating heat as well as I can see that there are thermal pads, if you can check, there are thermal pads in between the backplate and the PCB. Okay. So, thoughts on the card, okay? As you can see here, it's very rigid and it's not that heavy. And that is a good thing because they've used aluminum. This is actually a die cast aluminum. Another is that if you are going to mount this GPU vertically, I guess that you need to take note of the allowance up front because we know that if you mount the GPU vertically on your case, the airflow from the front of the case is very less. So you have to take note of that, especially that this has a 2.7 card slot allotment. So it's really a thick card. You will really allot three slots on your case if you are going to buy this GPU. Other than that, we can see here that the connection is for a dual 8-pin with the switch for boost mode and quiet mode or stealth mode as XFX has it. So the difference between this one and the XT, this is the non-XT that we have here, is that that one has three toggles. One is the performance mode that, of course, optimizes performance. The other one is stealth mode. I guess that that the fan will turn off if you are not gaming on this GPU. But we have to check that. I have to double check that. But another one is that stealth mode. And another one is the rage mode. That opens up the power delivery and eats more power to support the higher boost clocks and the higher clocks that the rage mode provides on these cards. So that is one difference. So the XT has that. Rage mode toggle, this one doesn't have. Aside from the toggle switches, one of the difference between the non-XT and the XT version of the Speedster series is that this one only has a 10 plus 1 power phase delivery. That is actually ample given that this has a lower boost clock than that of the XT version. That one has a 14 plus 2 power phase delivery to accommodate for the Rage mode feature that that card has. The MSRP of this card is around 700 to 750 USD. That is in USD and subject to, of course, availability. We all know that there is this wide pandemic, not of the coronavirus, but also the 7 nano nanometer chips. So this actually uses one of those technologies. So we'll check how the availability is. But on your region, for example, if you are in the North Americas, I don't know what the availability is on there. Probably you can find this on Micro Center if you're lucky. But when I am checking earlier this morning, this is actually available. So that would be it for this video. I hope you like our content for the XFX 6800 non-XT GPU. This is actually a privilege for me to do as I really am a fan of technology. And it is really interesting what is steering the market right now in terms of GPU. There's a pandemic, everyone wants to play, everyone is inside, so the GPU market is really in demand. Please do like this video if you want to see more of this kind of content. It will really help us and see you on the next video. Subscribe! <laughs>